Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Jit Ki Part Sala. Today I am here with another new lesson of Elective Geography Class 9 under SEBA board. So the lesson is Agriculture, which is the 7th number lesson of Elective Geography. So let's see a little bit about Agriculture. Agriculture is a major and very old economic activities of the people of the world as we know that agriculture is one of the major and the old economic activity of the people around the world generally in broad sense both crop production and livestock rearing are together considered as agriculture so you should know that not only the cultivation of crops but rearing of animals is also considered an agriculture agriculture depends on a number of natural and socio-economic factors. So agriculture mainly depends on different kind of natural as well as the socio-economic factors of that place. Among the natural factors like land, surface slope, climate and water are important. So natural factors especially uh, for agriculture the things required naturally are what? Land, surface, slope, Climate and water are generally important. Among the socio-economic factors, if we see the socio-economic factors, the important one are economic condition, level of education, okay, economic condition or level of education is also very much necessary for the growth of agriculture, urbanization, industrialization and transport and communication and market. So these are socio-economic factors which are necessary for the development of agriculture. These factors are not similar everywhere and therefore agricultural practice also varies from area to area. And as we know both the socio-economic factors and natural factors are not same everywhere. These are different in different places. As a result we can also say that the ways of practicing agriculture are also different in different areas. The crop cultivated method of cultivation and the objective of agriculture are found to vary over space and through time. So the crops whatever people cultivate around the world. Okay, so the method of cultivation and the reason behind cultivating that crops are generally different over space and through time. It means what? Suppose if we take the example of paddy. The ways of cultivating paddy here in our country and the way of cultivating paddy in some other country may be different. And it may also uh, be the different objective behind that. Some people cultivate paddy for their domestic purposes while some other uh, practices or they cultivate crops especially paddy for uh, supplying in the market or for selling in the market. So the cultivation way along with the reason behind cultivating are different over space, over space means from place. The agriculture of Assam is different from that of Rajasthan. So just now we have talked about two different countries. If we talk about two different states within our country, we can say here the agriculture of Assam and is different from that of Rajasthan because of the variation in the natural and socio-economic factors okay so the crops grown or the ways of cultivation is different in Assam as well as in Rajasthan because in these two different places the natural factors as well as the socio-economic factors are different even the agriculture of Assam is now different from what was 50 years back it means what if we go back and see uh, the way of agriculture 50 years back in Assam and if we compare the process of agriculture in recent years these are different. Within the state, certain changes have occurred in the status of natural and socio-economic factors. So in these last 50 years, why the method of agriculture have been changed here in Assam, if we have to say, then there may be different kind of natural factors and socio-economic factors which has changed according to the passage of time. As a result, agriculture has also experienced variety of changes as a result agriculture or the method of agriculture have also experienced lot of changes from the above it is clear that agriculture is not performed 
equally with similar objective in all parts of the world. So from the above discussion what we have understood that the reason behind cultivating of crops may not be similar everywhere in the world. In the vast world it is quite natural to have great variations among the natural and socio-economic factors. As we know that our earth is not a small one so in this vast world it is certain that we can see different kind of crops as well as different kinds of natural and socio-economic factors. Consequently, agriculture has also assumed diverse characteristics. So, as a result, agriculture has also assumed different types of characteristics in different places. The following is a brief description of the major types of agriculture practiced in different parts of the world. So, now we will see some of the major crops that are grown in the different part of the world. Types of agriculture. The agriculture practiced in the world may be divided into various classes. So as you know that there are different types of agriculture that are practiced around the world. This can be divided into certain categories. Different characteristics of agriculture such as permanence, method of farming, objective of agriculture, farm size, investment of capital may be the basis of classification. So just now as we have seen that there are different kinds of agriculture that are practiced around the world. So we have to divide these into some categories. So how we will divide this? On the basis of certain characteristics. On the basis of characteristic here means like on the basis of permanence, whether it is uh, permanent agriculture or shifting agriculture. Suppose method of farming will be another objective of agriculture, farm size and many more are here. Generally, Agriculture is classified as follows. So let's see what are the division of agriculture. These are very much important. So you have to remember all these division. Okay, so let's see point number one. Agriculture may be of two types according to its permanence. So on the basis of permanence, it may be of two types. Number A is permanent agriculture while number B is shifting agriculture. In exam, there may be a question that what are the different types of agriculture on the basis of its permanence? Then the answer will be permanent agriculture and shifting agriculture. In number two, it is given on the basis of farm size. Agriculture may be of another two types. Number A is large scale or extensive agriculture, while B is small scale or intensive agriculture. Similarly, if we see number three, According to economic consideration, agriculture may be of another two types that is, that is commercial and number B is subsistence agriculture. Number four, if we see on the basis of land quality, climate and method of farming, there may be another two types of agriculture. Number A is dry farming and number B is wet farming. So in the next page, we will discuss all these uh, different types of agriculture. Last two lines you see, in addition to the above types, some special kinds of agriculture are practiced in some countries of the world. They may also be considered as some types of agriculture, okay. Besides these also, whatever we have got here, different types of agriculture, in some countries, some more types of agriculture are also practiced. They include like plantation agriculture, collective farming, horticulture and market gardening. The following is a discussion on each of the agricultural types. So now let's see the different types of agriculture in brief. First of all, we will see permanent agriculture. Generally, people permanently settle down in the plains and perform permanent agriculture there. So generally, in some area, especially in the plain area, people permanently settle down there and they start practicing some kinds of agriculture. We call it permanent agriculture as they live there permanently. In the fields of the plains, people cultivate for years together. So they settle down there permanently and for many years they cultivate there. The farmers use plow, tractors, irrigations and fertilizers in their agriculture. So, so, so generally in permanent agriculture, the farmer use plow, tractors, irrigation and fertilizers in their agriculture. This type of agriculture practiced permanently in an area 
is called permanent agriculture. So this type of agriculture where people permanently settle down and they cultivate for a long period is generally known as permanent agriculture. Presently, almost in all parts of the world, permanent type of agriculture is practiced. So at present days, this kind of agriculture is practiced throughout the world. The agricultural output in this type of agriculture is relatively high. So here agricultural output, agricultural output means the production of that crop is generally high in permanent agriculture. Livestock rearing forms a component of this type of agriculture. And livestock rearing that means rearing of animal is also a part of this permanent agriculture. Okay. So now let's go and see the next topic that is shifting cultivation or shifting cultivation or zooming is the another one. Especially in uh, northeast we call it zoom cultivation but outside northeast it is popularly known as shifting cultivation. So let's go and see what is shifting cultivation. In the highlands, here highland means the hills, mountains and plateaus. So in the highlands, hills, mountains and plateaus of the tropical region, it is difficult to practice agriculture permanently due to certain natural factors. So especially not only tropical regions here, those areas which are covered by hills, mountains and plateaus, there it is not possible to uh, cultivate different kinds of crops because of the problem they faced there, especially natural factors. The inhabitants of these areas practice a kind of temporary agriculture on the hill slopes. So especially here permanent agriculture are not seen or are not practiced as they have to face different kind of natural factors. So here for temporary period people cultivate the crops, especially on the hill slopes. After removing the forest cover, they cultivate there for 2-3 years. So how they practice? At first, they clear the forest, then they uh, put fire on the forest and they cultivate there for 2-3 years by using traditional types of tools. Then what happens? After that, they shift to some other area and cultivate following the same method. So after cultivating in a place for 2-3 to three years, they shift to some other place where they repeat the same process and they cultivate there for 2-3 years. After that again they move to some other places. So it is known as shifting cultivation as we have seen that people shift from one place to another for cultivation. This type of practice is known as shifting cultivation. In all the hilly areas of India, shifting cultivation is practiced. So this shifting cultivation is practiced in all the hilly areas of India. The tribal people of Northeast state, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Meghalaya and Assam hills practices this type of agriculture. So especially in Northeast if we have to say as Northeast is covered with hilly area. So in all the places you can see zoom cultivation or shifting cultivation. It is known as zoom cultivation in the Northeastern region of India. So in Northeast region we call it zoom cultivation. It is a primitive type of agriculture with relatively less crop output. Generally this system is an ancient system and here the crop production is very low as compared to the permanent type of agriculture. The frequent shifting of agricultural field may have negative impact on the local environment. But it has a demerits also as people shift from one place to another and during this process they clear the forest, they put fire on the forest. It may bring lot of negative impact on the environment of that place. Now let's see large scale agriculture. So in the countries of the world where agricultural land is more compared to the population, the fields are extensive. So in some countries where the land area is more as compared to the population, their agricultural land is also very more. Agriculture is performed in the large fields by using modern machinery. So as they have more agricultural land, they use modern technology and in large area, they practice same kinds of crops. In the countries like USA, Canada and Australia, extensive types of farming, that is large scale farming is practiced. A particular crop covers a vast area in this type of agriculture. 
hope you have understood it means that in some country where the agricultural land is more as compared to the population there the, the people cultivate same kinds of crops in a large area in a vast area by using modern technology here the output of this agriculture is mostly marketed internationally and in this country whatever crops are produced generally these are sold in international market for all the countries this was about large scale agriculture now let's go and see a little bit about small scale agriculture small scale agriculture as opposed to extensive agriculture small scale or intensive agriculture is practiced in the densely populated countries of the world large scale agriculture we have seen are generally practiced in those countries where the agricultural land is very more as compared to the population where same kind of crops are grown in a vast area in opposite to that if we see small scale industries here this kind of agriculture is generally practiced in such country where it is very densely populated agricultural land is relatively less in the populous country like india bangladesh myanmar japan etc so the crops that we grow here in india we call it small scale agriculture because we have come to know that especially small scale agriculture are practiced in such country which is very densely populated so some of the countries which are very much densely populated are given here like india bangladesh myanmar japan etc therefore agriculture is performed in limited area so in this country agriculture is performed in limited areas okay in these countries farming families have very little land to cultivate and here those who depend on agriculture they have very less or very little land for cultivation therefore the same plot of land has to be cultivated two to three times in a year in order to feed the family members so as the land for cultivation is very less here in india some of the people they cultivate the same plot of land again and again at least two to three times so that they can feed the family members this type of farming is labor intensive okay this type of farming is labor intensive most of the agricultural products are used to meet the domestic demand and here this kind of crops are especially grown to fulfill the domestic demands not to sell in the markets small scale agriculture dominates the agricultural scenery of the densely populated countries of the third world so small scale agriculture are generally seen in those country which is very densely populated and it can also be called as a characteristic of the third world country so now let's see another one that is commercial agriculture so let's see commercial agriculture the agriculture practiced extensively for commercial purpose is called commercial agriculture so agriculture or commercial agriculture are those kind of crops which are grown especially for business purpose or for commercial purpose generally in the mid latitude low rainfall areas crops like wheat maize cotton are cultivated commercially so especially where low rainfall takes place crops like wheat maize cotton etc are cultivated and especially are cultivated for commercial purpose this type of agriculture applying modern technology is mainly found in the prairie region of usa pampas of argentina veld of south africa and the downs of australia so these are some of the regions where this kind of crops are grown there is similarity between the commercial and extensive agriculture from economic point of view so large scale agriculture and commercial agriculture are little bit similar because both of these are grown for commercial purposes in a large area nowadays cultivation of vegetables and fruits for trade purpose is also considered as commercial farming so nowadays if some people are cultivating vegetables and fruits for trade purpose then it can also be called as commercial farming now we will see another one that is subsistence agriculture subsistence agriculture is another important one in the economically backward interior areas the poor peasants practice traditional kind of agriculture 
so especially in every country there are some remote area so in that remote area poor peasants poor farmers they practice some agriculture by taking the help of traditional tools their land holding size is small and capital investment in agriculture is negligible so their land uh, size is also very small and they invest very less amount in their agriculture that means capital investment is also almost negligible that means very less generally the agriculture practice traditionally by using manual energy that means by using human beings effort by not using any kind of modern tools and equipments if any plot of land is cultivated by using human beings effort human beings energy to fulfill their day to day need we call it subsistence agriculture the main aim of such agriculture is to meet the domestic demand and main objective or the main aim of subsistence agriculture is to fulfill the demand of the family that is domestic demand however the growing population has made subsistence farming increasing intensively in most of the countries of africa and asia this type of agriculture is prevalent in most of the countries of africa and asia this type of agriculture is prevalent so here also you can see in your area or in our area also we can see about this kind of subsistence agriculture so let's go and see the dry farming the dry farming is seen in those areas where rainfall is low and land is dry especially dry farming is seen in such places where rainfall is low and the land is very dry in this farming irrigated water is not applied and in dry farming water with the help of irrigation is also not supplied in the dry western part of india dry farming is practiced so in the western part of india dry farming is practiced crops like bajra and millets are the dominant crop of this region and crops like bajra and millets are grown in this dry farming now next is opposite to dry farming that is wet farming in the rainy areas agriculture is practiced using natural available water so in the area where rainfall is generally high their agriculture is practiced by using natural available water those areas of india where yearly rainfall is more than 200 cm remain naturally wet so the area of india where the average annual rainfall is more than 200 cm the land of that area remains generally wet the areas do not need irrigation facility during summer and this area does not require any kind of irrigation facilities crops like rice jute banana etc are the main crops of these areas okay so the main crops of wet farming are rice jute banana etc so you have to remember the example also dry farming we have got just now bajra and millets while in wet farming examples are rice jute banana etc you have to remember this examples in most of the areas of the countries in monsoon asia wet farming is generally practiced this type of agriculture is relatively less expensive and this kind of agriculture is generally less expensive so this much for today students in next video we will see the remaining part of the lesson thank you very much for watching the video